Good day folks, today we are going to break down the Cape Cobra Kiss of Death on the beach. Um, also one of the videos I get a lot of uh, questions and criticism and today I'd like to discuss the Cape Cobra, one of Africa's most beautiful cobra species and the most venomous cobra found in Africa. It is a remarkable snake for it comes in so many colors and shapes and sizes um, that it's very easily mistaken. For example, up in the northern parts of Southern Africa, in the desert, there can be an orange color. In the middle parts of Southern Africa, where it's dry and arid, there can be a yellow color with freckles and speckles. And down the Western Cape area, where it's colder, there can be a darker color, almost resembling a mole, black mole snake. They can have a dark copper color. Just truly a magnificent snake species in so many different colors. And only 15 milligrams of that snake's venom is required to be fatal to an adult. So incredibly potent neurotoxic venom. I've always had a large respect for them. And growing up as a child, I would never even imagine freehanding one of these animals. It's not something I would ever even think about. So it is truly a remarkable snake species. And it took years and years for me to get up to the level where I was comfortable enough to risk my life to put my hand on the back of them, never mind trying to give it a kiss. They also go in the same trance-like state like many of the other cobras and generally not an aggressive snake if they can get away. So they make a big hood, throw a big display and then they move off quite gracefully and fast. So not a snake that is easily um, aggravated but if cornered or tried, so when people try to kill them then uh, you can run into trouble because they will defend themselves. A remarkable specimen and uh, this particular video that we're going to be breaking down today it's just amazing the, to encounter one of these shiny, beautiful cobras on, on wet, uh, on uh, white sand like that. It's just remarkable. So I'm going to start here yeah, um, with where I discovered this snake sitting on the beach. Just off the beach, actually on the sand dunes. There's a lot of uh, rats and mice that live in these little biomes. So it's a perfect location for the Cape Cobra. And they will also sometimes eat other snakes. So quite a common hunting ground for them is the, these wetland areas around the Western Cape where we found this particular specimen. So now we start, I've encountered the snake. He's sitting on the beach. I'm jumping down, running towards him. In my head now, I've got to start analyzing and calculating exactly what, what, what is the temperament of the snake. You can see he's making a big hood, warning me not to come any closer. So he's defending himself now. So what they do is if you, if you confront them, they make a hood. If they find any opportunity to move away, they will. But this snake is now seeing there's no way it's going to be able to move away fast enough. It's vulnerable. So it's putting on a display. And instantly I try to get my hand on the back of the head striked at me but that was as you see wasn't the actual strike where he tried to envenomate me it was just a warning movement the mouth didn't even open so they will sometimes just bump with their heads just to, to warn you remember snakes do not want to inject venom it's not something that they want to do they want to save their venom for prey so if he had his way he would not inject venom and just give me warnings and that's why every bite's different because they control the amount of venom they inject now I'm just there in the strike range, or just out of the strike range to the viewer. It looks like I'm in strike range, but actually if the snake did strike forward, I would just be out. Now I've got my first finger on the back of his head. And this is now the first part, and I'm very gentle. As you can see, he's not even opening his mouth, rubbing him nice, relaxing. Look at the hood going down. That's an indicator that he's calming down a bit. So I know exactly the range where my hand can be in. So to the viewer, it looks like I'm in strike range, but I'm just outside of it. So it's years and years of analyzing movement of these snakes that has given me the opportunity to be able to do this almost 100% safely. So even though it looks like I'm risking my life, there's almost no risk here. I've done this over and over and over again. If you understand your, line, your boundaries, then you can definitely pull this off. But it took many, many years. And obviously there's still a level of adrenaline. But over the years, I've calmed down to the level where there's almost like there's, my heart rate doesn't even increase when I do it. I'm completely relaxed when it comes to dealing with these animals. So now you'll see I'm trying to just gauge him again while still focusing on the camera, trying to talk about how and what his behaviors are. And he's just focused on me. Look, as the hand moves, he just keeps his eye on my hands. He is, that's what's actually making him scared is that these hands might come out and hurt them. But then I put my hand gently on the back of his head again and you realize, oh wow, this creature is not actually trying to kill me or hurt me because it's actually quite a pleasant sensation. You would imagine someone giving you a nice uh, scratch on the back of the head like that. You can see now he's completely relaxing, sniffing me, almost like curious in a way. As you can see, he almost looks, he's got a curiosity on his face. Like what, uh, it, it, I mean, it's never happened to him before. So this is kind of a, a, a strange thing that's happening to him. And now 
Just right. And I'm not applying any pressure there. It is absolutely gentle. There's no, if he wants to, he can pull back, but he's not, look at that. There's no pressure being applied. I'm just giving him a gentle rub all along the spine. And now he's completely gone out. He is now in a complete state of relaxation. I can move my hand over him. I can see I'm always looking for small little movements in the body. And yeah, you also have to trust your years of working with them to see that obviously there's now a high level of risk because he looks like he's completely fallen asleep. So you can see just a gentle rub. And I'm coming in for that uh, famous kiss of death that so many people always uh, talk about. And you can see he's completely relaxed. Still not even a movement. The body, he's not even breathing properly. He's completely shut down. Now he's in a state of that they call state of thanatosis. And then just a quick little tickle and he's wide awake again. Remarkable, look at that. And it just shows you just by using a bit of force again, he's back up again. But if you go into that trance-like state where you gently rub him and you don't hurt him, that you trigger this remarkable primitive instinct. And he's just back to normal, like nothing ever happened. A slight bit of confusion, but uh, didn't harm him in any way. It's a truly remarkable animal. And I'm always blown away by how incredible these animals are. Now the Cape Cobra, is a snake that causes a large amount of the snake bites in Southern Africa. And uh, the reason being because they're quite common and they're quite widely distributed. So you can find them everywhere from the top deserts of Southern Africa all the way down to the, the Cape where it gets cold and rainy. So they're quite well adapted to very harsh conditions from the most arid, the deserty climates where it gets up to 45 degrees plus all the way down to in the Western Cape where you can get up to five degrees. So they're really remarkable at surviving in these really harsh environments. And with that, they've evolved a very potent neurotoxic venom. So they demand quite a presence. And it's an honor for me to have been able to work with so many throughout the years. And it's always a snake that I'm on the lookout for. Obviously not a snake you want to encounter in your house because they do pack quite a powerful venom. But regardless of all of that, they're actually quite a sweet snake. People mistake them in this country for being aggressive when they're actually not. People always going on and on about the debates where the snakes are aggressive. Not snakes aren't truly aggressive. They have evolved to defend themselves because they're out here in Africa or anywhere in the world where there's much bigger animals that try to hunt them or can step on them. So they've had to evolve these capabilities, whether it's huffing and puffing or making a big hood to warn other animals not to come near them. So uh, the spirit of the snake is just to go out there, be wild, hunt and find small rodents, snakes or birds. And that is all it really wants to do and re re uh, reproduce. So there's no vindictive hunting of humans or going out of its way to bite the humans. When it gets frightened, when you step on it, or you try to kill it, that's when it happens. So not an aggressive animal at all. And as I've proved here, they actually got quite a sweet side. Um, you're actually more likely to get bitten by your African gray parrot than you are by a Cape Cobra if you come in gently. So it's a remarkable animal and it was my honor to have been able to work with it and hopefully I can save thousands of them uh, as the years go on because whenever there's a call out I'll be there to try and help these animals and educate people that these animals also deserve to live and they're actually quite quite well tempered um, even though they put up this big display it's all just a macho show there's no real true rooted aggression it's just to warn me to please because he's actually scared it's fear it's like me um, putting up a big show because I'm actually scared deep down inside. So it's uh, once again was a remarkable scene and I really loved to be able to interact with these primitive animals at such a high level.